In this video, I'm going to show how to deploy a simple Razor project to Azure using Visual Studio 2019 and, of course, Azure. We'll take a look at a few quick slides here, and then we're going to jump right in in just a moment. So first of all, the steps that we have. A few prerequisites. Install Visual Studio 2019. Create an Azure account. And then associate your Azure account with Visual Studio 2019. In the upper right corner of Visual Studio, there's a place where you can sign in, and that essentially assembles together both your Visual Studio sign-in as well as your Azure sign-in. We're going to create a simple Razor project, publish it, and during publishing, we're going to see resource group, app plan, etc. Then we'll try it out and manage it with the console. When we go to publish, we're going to see a lot of these resources come together an app service plan, a resource group, and a subscription. And recall that what we're going to do is write an application on Visual Studio. Then, once we've created this app service on Azure, a user can open up a browser, and through the mechanism provided here in Azure, the user can see our application. So let's get started. I've opened up Visual Studio 2019, and you see there is a prompt to create a new project. So I'm going to click on that, and ASP.NET Core Web Application is what I want, and that happens to be at the top because I've chosen that one before. That might not be the case for you. It might not be towards the top. So just search for Core Web like so. And what I'm specifically going to do is a Razor page application, which we'll typically do through this ASP.NET Core Web Application. So I choose Next. We need to give it a name. We'll say Hello World 7024. So kind of ambiguous, but kind of unique at the same time. Hello world, just a starter project. And then let's go ahead and choose create. The application appears in Visual Studio, and I can go ahead and look at it on my local device without actually publishing it by hitting the little run or debug button up here. Here we go, a very straightforward application. We can make a subtle change to this so that we know that it's ours, and then we can publish it. I'll go ahead and choose stop first. Let's go to pages and index. And I'll simply say, welcome to our course, save and republish. Now, if you've not seen a Razor page before, this might look a little bit confusing, but I'll give a quick overview. Razor pages allow us to mix together a bit of HTML with a bit of C Sharp logic as well. And then we have essentially a controller class that handles any button clicks or the like. So I made a change to the HTML portion, republished, and now we see welcome to our course. So now let's publish to Azure. Let's go to Solution Explorer and find our project here and right click and choose Publish. One thing I'll say, and maybe it doesn't come as a great surprise, but the integration between Visual Studio 2019 and Azure is excellent. Really, if you have an idea, you already have an Azure account, getting your idea published on Azure is quite straightforward and that's what we're about to show. So we'll start with App Service and we'll say Create New. And then I'm going to choose Create Profile. This is where we're going to set certain things like our subscriptions, our resources, our hosting plan, and the like. So name, call it whatever you want. It just generated something random here. Subscription pay-as-you-go is the most common. There's also free, and then there's kind of like a membership account, but pay-as-you-go is the most common. Resource group, let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll just call it Hello World 7024 Resources. Resource group is where we can associate any resources that we need for this service. Those resources could be things like a database, any kind of file storage, VPN, authentication, any other thing like that that's a resource that we want to add on. Now, hosting plan, careful here. I'm going to go ahead and choose new. Uh, we'll give it that location. Here's where we need to be really particular though. This drop down where it says size is where we have the choice between performance and capacity versus cost. Since this is just a demo app, I'm going to choose the free tier. But the caution here is if you don't actually click on new and you don't work through all of those prompts, you might end up paying for something. Application Insights is analytics, which is how are users interacting with your application. This is absolutely imperative for a production app because you can see if your ideas are really working and if they're taking flight with the user or if they're flopping and if you need to pivot. Nonetheless, for our simple application, I won't worry about that. I'll go ahead and choose Create. While that's deploying, I'll show you that what my current dashboard looks like on Azure. And you see a couple things called Roster here, which is a previous application I deployed. 
but you don't see anything about the application I'm deploying right now. So let's let this keep going. As a matter of fact, maybe if we choose refresh, ah, take a look at that. I choose refresh and note that we have both an app service and an app service plan. So let's take a look at both. The app service plan, it doesn't hurt to confirm that it's free. Pay as you go, it's affiliated with a pay as you go subscription. And then remember the resource group are any resources that we want to affiliate with this application. Now, why is it important to have that resource group affiliated with our app service plan? Well, it's very important because those resources are typically the things that we are going to be paying for. So I have not added many resources just yet because this is a straightforward application. But if I wanted something like a virtual machine or if I wanted a database, so on and so forth, I could add it here to the resources, which bundle up under the plan, which is how I'm charged. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's take a look at the app service itself. The app service is what assembles together our app service plan along with the project we are going to deploy. So our app service plan pulls in our resource group, which we've already seen, and our subscription, which we've already seen. The other thing this will give us is a URL, which is where we can view our application. Let's run back to Visual Studio and hit publish. Now we can open a new browser, go to that link, and sure enough, here is our site that's publicly hosted so I can really access it anywhere I have an internet connection. Now that we have the app deployed, we can use the Azure console to manage the app. For example, what happens when we press stop? We go back to our welcome page, hit refresh, and we get error 403. The web app is stopped, so 403 is one of our HTTP response codes. Back to the dashboard, we can restart it if we wish. We see that didn't take very long. We can browse to the page by selecting the Browse button on the upper left. And sure enough, here we go, our page is restarted. We see Welcome to our course. Any other thing we want to do here, we can take a look at our resource group. We can edit that. We can add resources to it. We can do all of our management right here from this web-based console. This reminds me a lot of the application servers that we've had for many years, things like WebSphere and WebLogic. The difference is WebSphere, WebLogic tended to run on your own hardware, your own iron, if you will, where this is cloud-based, so everything that we're doing is running in the cloud, and we're simply interacting with it over the web browser. As we've discussed, there are a lot of advantages to this cloud-based model. You only pay for what you need, you have low fixed cost, and also handling peaks is a lot easier because you can dynamically scale up and you can dynamically scale out you don't have to purchase all of the hardware in advance for your anticipated peaks like we used to have to do 10, 20 years ago. So I hope this video on how to quickly deploy a, an application from Visual Studio to Azure was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.